we've got a great time of recalibration, don't we? Recalibration, that's what we all need. Because guess what? Our world, Satan, even our own flesh tells us to do A, and God says this is what we are to do. In, in St. Paul's writing to the Ephesians, he says we can't do it. We are dead in our trespasses. Th that, means, that means we are useless. We, we are unable to do anything about it. Because how many of you have seen a dead body that's done a bit of work? What's, what's the thing that dead bodies do? They lie there. They're incredibly still, right? Except, while we were yet dead in our sins, Christ died for us. And, and while we were yet lost and away from him, we have been born again of water and the Spirit. That's what the gospel talks about. How must you be born again? You have to be born again of water and the Spirit. And when you're born again of water and the Spirit, your recalibration of life comes to something like this. I bet you can say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. God has recalibrated you. And here's what he wants you to understand about you. You are his workmanship of love. Certainly Christ's work for us on the cross has made us his own, and we are his forever. But now beyond that, how, how, did, how did Paul say this? He says, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not from works, so no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus Christ to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. Did you know that God has been preparing for you to come to this moment of your life? God's been preparing for you to be in this place, in Roselle, Illinois, in this congregation for his purposes. He's been preparing this for you. And how do I know that? Because you're here. And how do I know what you're supposed to do? That you're his workmanship of love? Mm. If God so loved the world... And if Jesus so loved us, and his command, remember Monday, Thursday is coming up, right? The Thursday of Holy Week, when Jesus gave us the, the gift of this sacrament, and where he gave us a new command, a new mandate. That's why it's called, Mon no, it's not Monday, Thursday, it's Monday, Thursday. It comes from the word mandatum, uh, Latin word, uh, his command is this, that you love one another. If God has prepared this, then I got to be his workmanship of love. He's worked, his love has worked on my heart. How about you? And now he's calling us to go be love wherever he sends us for his purposes. Now, let, let me help you get a, 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 an understanding of this about life. For how many of you, when you became a parent, things changed? Yeah. Yeah. Eight times things changed. Parent and step-parent. And you knew this, right? You come going in. There's a moment God has prepared you and he's given you the gift of that child because it's from his, children are a gift of God. It's not a biological thing that happens. God creates us. It says in Psalm 139 that we are created in the womb. He knits us together. He knows us be, before we're even sperm and egg together. He already knows us. 
and he's got the length, if you will, of our lives. The whole, our whole lives are stretched out before him. So great is his love for us. And when God's prepared that child with, within the mom, he's also prepared a mom and a dad to be parents, and things change, right? We talk about a different change that happens, a, a kind of a change that, 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 that we don't all the time understand because we don't see this as a gift of God. We see this as an administrative thing. When you became 18 years old, or some of you, it was 21, you became a citizen that could vote, right? And, and for how many of you did that change your life? Not as many as became parents. Because a lot of us will sit there and say, well, you know, I, I got the right to vote, but you know, uh, somebody else will do this. Somebody else will take care of this. It's, I, I know it's my right and my citizenship, but, but, but really, it's asking an awful lot. And you know how I know that's true? What's our voter turnout? 20%, 25%, maybe, maybe of registered voters. People don't take that seriously. And yet that's something that right to vote has been hard fought for. People have died to give you that. Someone has died to give you your life right now. Don't treat this like a maybe, or if I feel like it, or if I like the candidates. You know, they, they say sometimes that for those of us, and this is just kind of a flat political speech, um, if we choose not to vote and get involved in, in the process of governing our nation, we deserve whoever we get, right? Because we haven't done anything. God says, I don't want you to just exist in life. I don't want you to receive whatever the rest of the world gets. I've got a better plan for you, a bigger plan for you. I have set you apart to be my, my love, my love. And when you get into that rhythm, when you recalibrate yourself into that reality, things like this happen. So, so I was gone this last week, a couple of days on a trip. Right before I left, I went to the back garage door, which now I can talk about, I couldn't talk about before because I was having a hard time getting it to lock. This, this is a 25-year-old or 30-year-old lock that's, that's on there, and the doorknob just wasn't closing right, and it couldn't lock, and I was having a harder and harder time. And I said, you know what? I know, I know that even though there is another lock that people would have to get through <laughs> on the inside of the garage, I know this will make my wife crazy because I'm gone, and she's the only one in the house, and, and she's going to feel insecure. And I can't do anything about it right now, but the first thing when I get back, even without being asked, <laughs> and she didn't know about it. Oh, she knew the lock was busted. <laughs> but, but, and she didn't know about it. I ran off Saturday morning. I got up bright and early. I ran off to Menards, got us a lock, got it all installed and everything else. Why? Because I love her. And I don't want her, I, I mean, it's not hard to figure out what's going to be pleasing to her, right? Really, I mean, just love. It's not hard to figure out what's pleasing to God either. Just act in love. Really. Because that's what God's made you for. Sometimes we wonder about our purpose in life. There's, this is not a great mystery. And, and I know that we get these feelings, like years ago, for, for those of you, many of you, have, I've, I've talked about getting hit by lightning before. Some of you in the balcony, the, the, the kids may not have, have heard this. But, but you remember, when, after this, I'm laying there, and the doctors are saying he's going to die, and I'm praying and saying, God, I don't know what's going on. I, whew, you're in charge, though. I just can't help but feel 
that I'm not done yet. H have you ever had that feeling? Like there's something out there for you to do, something out there for you to be, some way for you to act or live, that God's got something planned for you yet to do, and that we're not complete. Friends, we are never complete, and I want to recalibrate you to that today. You are God's workmanship of love. And when you understand that and start living into that and stop thinking about what I might be doing and start doing, start living in love, God can use the simplest you, the easiest you, to, to, to his purpose. And he's got a great purpose for you. Now, we haven't always lived into it. For those of you, so, so we got uh, the young ringers up, upstairs. What grade are you guys in? Eighth, seventh, sixth, fifth? Something like that? Yes? Okay. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. So, so I want you to take a look. If you guys, if you're in elementary school, you are one of our ringers. Stand up right now so you can see. Go ahead, stand up, please. I want you to see. Okay. Look down here at these folks here. All you're going to see is backs of heads, right? But here's the thing. How many of us have blown it in our relationship with God, and at one time or another, you can say, you really walked away from it? Yeah. Do you see all these folks? You can sit down again. That's in your future. It may happen to you. I pray it doesn't. But I want you to know that God can use the spiritual knuckleheads that each one of us are to his purpose, for his glory. And you're not done yet. God has given you this moment, this time. And that's what he's talking about here. We are his workmanship of love. And the world needs to hear our workmanship of love. For the world that lives in darkness is already apart from God. And unless they see it in us, they're just not going to see it. Have, have you thought about that kind of vital job that you have? If they're not seeing love in us, they're not going to see it. So, so like this, uh, between 6.45 and about 7.15, every Sunday morning, you will find me driving up to McDonald's over here at Chicken Gary, and I'm ordering one thing, an oatmeal. I always have a hot oatmeal before I come. It fills my stomach so I don't have to eat so many donuts, right, by the end of the day. So, so I go there, and they've gotten to know me because I'm the guy who orders oatmeal and nothing else. And, and so I come through, and, and Janet was there this morning. And you know how Janet knows me? Because Janet gave me the wrong change about a month and a half ago. She gave me $1 too much. And I could have said, ooh, lucky day. But I drove around again, and I said, Janet, I don't want you to be off on this. I'm sorry. I, I, you gave me a dollar too much. They must have stuck together or something. But you gave me too much change. And she looked at me and said, nobody does this. <laughs> yeah. And every morning that I drive through, I see Janet there. I said, Janet, how are you doing? This morning we were talking about how much she works and why she works. And she says, I got two kids at home, and I've got a job. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this part-time to try and fill in the blank because my, my husband doesn't make enough money. And I'm working on Sunday morning, and I gotta have, only have a part-time job because i got to take the kids to school and pick them up from school. And I got to be there for them. I said, man, it's a hard work. You know what, Jan, today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you. And, and what a blessing. What a smile came on her lips. And when, when, when I, I knew she was expecting me, because when I said oatmeal only, her words over the mouth said, are you having a good day today? Because that's what I always ask her. <laughs> it's not brain surgery. It's love. 
And that's why we're connected. What Jesus has done by his Holy Spirit has made us his own. That's why he's connected us with his body and blood as we receive this. It's not just that we receive the body and blood and we've got our sins forgiven and we're off for life like, like we've got a spiritual uh, gas tank and, and that we're filling it up on Sunday and whoo, now I'm going to go off into the rest of the world. Instead, what God does is just as the arms of the, of the cross go up and down in relationship with him, but also with one another, Scripture itself says, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until, it, until he comes. And he goes further on to say, whenever you receive this, you need to receive this understanding the body of Christ. Unless you're doing this, receiving it, understanding the body of Christ. And it's not just that this bread is his body. I think he's talking about the body of Christ, all of us together. Unless you're seeing yourself as a part of of God's workmanship of love, it's time for you to change and to grow up and to stand firm. And if you want to build an enduring faith, you will recalibrate yourself by God's power and his Holy Spirit working in and through you. You will recalibrate yourself and start thinking about, how can I be a messenger of love? Because the world desperately needs you. You, not me preaching. You being the you God made you to be. Hear these words right after the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus said this, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. However, but... Whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. Men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. And if you tried to, to, to hide a sin and you don't want to confess, you don't want to say it out loud because it's so bad, done terrible things. Lots of us have done terrible things in life. And we just hope that no one ever he hears and sees it because we'd be so ashamed. But instead, what God says is this, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he has done has been done through God. God's got this purpose for you to be his workmanship of love. And he's been working and molding you your whole life long for just this day. Go out and live into your destiny. Live into your destiny that God has created in advance for you to do. Let's pray. Oh, Lord God, Sometimes I think you can't use someone like me. But then again, you've given me faith. You've given me your Holy Spirit. You've given me forgiveness. And the Bible says, you made me for this life. I am not happenstance. I am not an accident of evolution. I am not here because of the will of a mom and a dad. I am here because you put me here. Now I place myself under your leadership. This week when I pray, I will pray your, holy be your name in my life. I will pray your kingdom come in my life. I will pray your will be done in my life. Because when I pray, O oh Lord, the one who needs to change is me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on me. I am your child. I am your workmanship of love. Help me be love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Friends, would you rise to receive the blessing from God? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Now, go be his love.